teaching how to make a girl cheat is a touchy subject. And I don't think from an altruistic headspace and also from a logical headspace, you should do it. There's a lot of girls out there that are cool as fuck that are single. You might have a couple of reasons why you're doing this. Reason number one is that you don't have a lot of options yet in women. Or number two, it might be for a narcissistic reason. If it's a narcissistic reason where you feel so much cooler for taking a guy's girl, I don't really condone it, but I also get where you're at. Getting good at this stuff, getting good at game, is a leveling thing. You're gonna find yourself at certain levels at different places. But know this, on the other side of that girl, there's a guy that you're both hurting, and also there's a guy on the other side of that who may not take it too lightly that you slept with this girl. So don't get it twisted. Now these tactics are unethical and they work. So if you want to know the dark arts of how to take a girl off another guy, this is how you do it. Now that we got that out of the way, question number one is how likely is a girl to cheat? So when a girl has a boyfriend and you approach her, there's five ways usually a girl will respond. Two of these are going to open the door for you to talk her into cheating on her boyfriend. Again, I hate saying this. When I was younger and a lot more insecure, I would definitely do something like this. But for a lot of you guys who are not yet that good with the opposite sex, who are not feeling that confident in yourselves, who don't believe in yourself, I understand why you guys want to watch this video and that narcissistic drive to make you want to do this. However, treat this like a case study more than something that you guys would actually do. This is more just something fun to talk about, something more you can use to understand psychology a little bit better. Number one, you approach a girl and she might be looking uncomfortable. She might be tilting her head to the side. She might be giving a sympathetic smile. This girl is an awesome girl. This girl is a loyal girl and she has a boyfriend. Usually the girl will respond like this. Sorry, I, I apologize, I have a boyfriend. Don't take this to heart. A lot of you guys take this to heart and look at this as a rejection. It's not a rejection. She has a boyfriend. She's loyal to her dude. You guys shouldn't be taking this as an ego hit. You guys should look at this girl as being a sweet, authentic, cool girl who doesn't even know you and cares about your subjective reality. Number two, she is afraid to tell you that she has a boyfriend. She might be uncomfortable. She might be trying to distance herself from the conversation. Uh, this girl is afraid that you are going to lash out at her and she's had trauma based on how guys have treated her in the past when she told them she had a boyfriend. So don't be that guy. Number three, she walks away or she's just straight rude with you. Now this girl usually is a narcissist, but she is also a loyal narcissist. She is trying to, in her own way, be loyal to her guy. And her version of doing that is being rude to you. The next two are cheaters. Number four, she is yes flirty, but there's almost an invisible wall between you and her where she's not ever directly saying she's flirting with you or she's into you. The way she's interacting with you though is flirtatious. But on paper, if you were to be a stenographer and you'd be writing it down, on paper, it looks as if she's being a loyal girl. But in all actuality, what she's doing is she's flirting around and trying to get her validation. Usually these girls are narcissists or they have BBD or they're bipolar and they're using you as a supply of validation. You'll notice a lot of these girls will do duper's delight. It's usually, I don't know how to explain it. I'll, I'll post a photo up right here to show you guys what duper's delight looks like. It's, it's a facial expression that indicates that she's getting a little joy at tricking you or getting one over on you. Now, this girl right here is validation seeking. You could get her chasing you and stringed along. And if you string her along, she will chase you harder and harder for validation. Eventually, she'll fuck you to get it. However, this one's harder to sleep with than the final one. And I'm gonna go into the stenographer metaphor a little bit later in this video. Number five, she is open about having a boyfriend, but she's disrespectful towards him. She's dissing on him the entire time. She obviously has a lot of passive aggression towards him and she doesn't respect him. She'll use lines such as the following. He doesn't take me out anymore. We haven't had sex in months. Her alluding to the fact that he's soft. Or she'll say that he's despondent and not interacting with her anymore, not being warm towards her, maybe even being cold. Now at this point, this is the most likely girl to cheat out of the five. This one, if you ever hear this, these girls are the ones that will most likely cheat. I've like I said, when I was younger, I was the person who wasn't exactly very high in morals. I just wanted to get really good with women. I wanted to pull myself out of this pain body that I had with the opposite sex. Now that I'm older, now that I feel a lot more secure in myself, now that I've grown to become a lot more altruistic, again, <laughs> not happy about it, but it, it's just the way it is. This is this is what it is. This girl right here is the most likely to cheat with you or without you. Now, this is a point where a lot of guys would be like, well, she's going to cheat. Why doesn't she just cheat with me? It's... Uh, you don't know that for sure, to be fair. That's just like some dumb thing a lot of guys say. And why do you want to be the person that's the arbiter of some negative energy or, or hurting somebody else? I imagine some of you guys on here have been cheated on. It sucks a lot, doesn't it? Do you really want to hurt another guy the way that you felt? Most of you guys should be saying no right now. Essentially, she one, doesn't respect him, or two, feels like he does not respect her. The second respect is loss in a relationship or 
there is some animosity building up, that's when the relationship starts falling apart. If you listen to most therapists, the number one thing therapists say is the biggest cause of breakups or problems in relationships is disrespect, is not respecting your partner, is also building up animosity towards your partner. If you have these factors in place, the relationship's falling apart. For the fourth one, she won't be getting physical whatsoever. She'll never get physical. And that's kind of the point of it. She's trying to get the validation without be doing anything on paper that would get her in trouble or that she could rationalize as her actually cheating. So these girls usually resort to emotional cheating over physical cheating. But honestly, emotional cheating oftentimes does lead to physical cheating for women. Emotional cheating is the predecessor for physical cheating for a woman. For the last two girls, there's a handful of things you can do to increase your chances of sleeping with her or get her home. The girl in the fourth category as well usually will not tell you she has a boyfriend. What you'll notice is she's almost holding back energy and she's and then she'll start doing duper's delight and she'll be almost slightly reserved. She won't be emoting a lot, but she'll be giving off this pleased energy, this self-gratified energy. Now, with these kind of girls, to be fair, I would never bring up the fact that they had a, a boyfriend. I, I would never bring it up. I would just keep it to myself. And then you string her along, keep her fighting for validation, keep pushing and pulling it, and eventually she's going to be chasing you so hard that she ends up going to bed with you. For the fifth girl, usually she'll tell you she has a boyfriend, and she doesn't mind it. She doesn't mind telling you she has a boyfriend. Now, for this girl, what you want to do is you want to tell her that you have a girlfriend. I know this seems counterintuitive. But you gotta think from the girl's headspace. If the girl is gonna cheat on you, she does not wanna get caught. Now, what's the best way for her not to get caught? If the guy that she sleeps with also has something to lose. The girls in the fourth and fifth category usually are pretty shitty women, to be fair, and pretty shitty people. They do a lot of self-lying. They're not very um, self-aware. The, the girl in the fourth category, if you were actually to tell her that you had a girlfriend, she would attack you and get mad at you without understanding the hypocrisy of what's going on. Because to her, in her head, she's not cheating. In her head, she's not cheating and she isn't a cheater. But she's probably been cheated on herself and so she's going to spin her back around on you and look at you like she did one of those exes of hers and she's going to have a trauma attack or a pain body attack and she's going to attack you. It's why for the girl in the fourth category, you do not want to bring this up. You want to be more following the point of the stenographer like she is. You want to match her energy. You can be flirtatious in your energy, but never verbalize it. For both these girls, for fourth and fifth girl, you never want to verbalize it. It's more in the subtext of the conversation. It's by the way you move. It's by your energy. It's the person you are that attracts her. But what kind of person attracts the girl? One, relaxed. Two, is having fun, is masculine in his energy, is a man, somebody that she can respect. Because girls fuck guys who they respect. If you're not a guy she can respect, or she doesn't look up as a leader or somebody that is valuable, it's not gonna happen. So what you wanna do is put in the subtext, never verbalize your attraction towards her. The underlying frame is, is that you guys are just friends. You guys are just friends, but with flirtatious energy. Never verbalizing it, never talking about it because you do not wanna set off the self-lying in their head or that pain body in their head, except for the fifth girl. The way you frame the girl to the fifth girl is that you think your girlfriend is cheating on you. You're not 100% sure and she said that she is pregnant with your kid. You don't think she is, but just in case, you want to be safe. And you don't want to break up with her if she's going to have your kid. You don't want the kid being in a broken household. But at the same time, too, you think she's cheating on you. Now, you're going to get the sympathy vote from the girl. She's going to also get tacky towards the girl and also get the catty energy towards the other woman. You're also going to be pre-selected. And you're not going to be somebody that can say shit if anything did happen because your girlfriend's going to find out. Ooh. And now she can, be, um, now she can get away with this. She can get away with it. Because you're not going to say anything because you have a girlfriend. Now, let me explain the stenographer metaphor a little bit further. Girls do this all the time, especially in emotional cheating or in any situation, or even when they're flirting with guys in general. You guys have probably had this where a girl's into you, changed your mind, and then said that, that she never was into you the entire time because you did some dumb shit. The girls get able to get away with this because she never verbalized it. And if you were to call her out for it, you look stupid. And she could always just lie and say that that wasn't the case and you're reading into it too much and make and gaslight you into thinking that never happened so you want to use the same tactics guys at an advanced level of game do what's called indirect direct game which is actually something that follows the stenographer effect the girl never knows 100 percent if you like her and if you verbalize your intentions but aren't your intentions you can get away with it i'm just being friendly oh he's just a friend what i can't have friends now you can use the same tactics to keep the girl strung along, keep her the tension tight, so she chases you harder and harder, wanting your validation, wanting your respect. You can keep giving it back and forth to her, give it to her non-verbally, give her eye contact, be cocky, be playful, be arrogant, be masculine, be confident in yourself. You have to believe in yourself before she believes in you. By being a guy's high value, over a long period of time, comfort 
is going to be built over time. Time spent equals comfort. Comfort equals sex. Equals the ability to be horny. So you got to take your time with this. Hang out with her. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't rush for sex. Take your time because the time is your because time is your ally. Unless she is verbalizing or is slowly moving it to her place herself, which if she is, then you want to rush it up because she wants to have sex. She's not going to verbalize it because again the stenographer effect but she will be slowly trying to move you towards her place so that she can cheat on her boyfriend. I'm gonna go back to actually something I was talking about before. So with number five, there's actually a really good technique that I heard a long time ago in the community and I've built upon since. The, the technique is you when the girl starts talking shit on her boyfriend, you try to spin those points around in his favor. And she says he's uh, really needy. You say, oh, so he likes you a lot. Oh no, my boyfriend likes me a lot. Eh. And you say, you know what, that's actually a problem with me. I have a really hard time with getting close to somebody too quick. I got all these crazy girls that are always chasing me down and I just don't trust anybody. Now you are saying that you're the opposite of her boyfriend, which is the one that she's mad at. When a girl usually is cheating on her boyfriend or is emotionally cheating, she'll usually start attacking her boyfriend with the traits that the other guy has that he doesn't. If you've ever been cheated on before, you probably noticed that she started nitpicking you. Maybe about your weight, about how much you're working, your job, maybe about the way you dress or the way you look. It's because the other guy has those traits. And she's now going through the, the honeymoon stage with this guy. She's going through the stage of glorifying this guy and love bombing him and love bombing herself and maybe even being love bombed herself. Well, if you point if you if you put yourself as the opposite of the guy that she is now currently mad at, she's gonna be tenfold more likely to sleep with you. If the guy is somebody who's very soft, he's not very masculine, and he come across very masculine, tough somebody that's a bad boy, she will definitely fuck you. She will definitely fuck you. If you're giving this and you're completely consistent to the energy and you're playful, you don't give a fuck about the outcome, you're just being playful, you're being cocky, you're being loud and, and wild, she's, she's gonna wanna take you home. You can hype him up again and again and keep pumping this and keep telling her that you're the opposite. So basically the idea is that society thinks that these certain things matter to a girl. They think that they want a guy that is super caring and loving, but she doesn't want that. She, she wants, she does want it, but she wants it from the guy who's masculine and strong. And this guy's not exhibiting strong masculine traits. So it's regardless of the, of the fact, it's like a homeless guy who, who wants to be your best friend. It doesn't matter. But if a rich guy want to be your best friend, uh, that guy has a lot of value to you. It has a lot of value to anybody. And her boyfriend currently doesn't have any value in her head. Now she's no longer attracted to him. She doesn't get wet for him. If you are the person who's leading to a close, you want to take her to your place with, a uh, intent of taking there for some other reason to either play pool maybe you guys have a pool like you have a pool at your apartment complex maybe you have a pool table maybe you have video games maybe you have a bar at your spot or a bar in like maybe your building maybe you have like a bar next door to your spot you can baby step her to that bar then move her to your place when she's more comfortable with you when she's had more time with you when she had more time to relax and get turned on in your presence she's had enough time to see consistency in your character all right guys i'm sorry for taking so long to put up a video i got pretty sick there for a week uh, it's been <laughs> kicked my ass. However, if you guys do have any questions, leave in the comment section below. And if you guys are interested in coaching, text me at 702-841-9909. And with that being said, peace. Play with nigga, that's dangerous. Told him I was raised in the basement. Twin egg case in the playpen. Take your face, rearrange it. I can turn eggs into bacon. I can serve base with an apron. Niggas been waiting to hate it. I got a beam and I'm anxious to raise it. Room right past you. Cops keep following a nigga, that's bad news. Sound like hassles. Suck it down, Remy, and I'm feeling like Pat Poops.